Welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do another little product video about fitting muzzle brakes. Um, we get some questions quite regularly about what they've got to do to time a muzzle brake. Um, now, so what I've got here is my 243, um, which I'm going to use for the demonstration. It's run one of our muzzle brakes for a long time. Um, it was running with a shim. I'll go through that in a little while. Um, I'm, I've now actually gone through and done the filing bits and pieces to start setting it up in timing the muzzle brake. But that's the rifle. I'll go through this muzzle brake. Go, grab the muzzle brake that we've been using, which is this one here. And I'll show you what we're talking about. To start off, timing it is talking about getting the muzzle brake so that when it does up, it does up straight. So you have it straight in line with your scope, with your rifle, everything. Everything's nice and flat. Doesn't really matter for how it shoots if it's a little bit off. It uh, doesn't really change anything in the way of they how they perform. Obviously, it blasts more on the ground and less, other, less um, on one side and more on the other side, but it really doesn't change how they shoot. But it looks pretty terrible. So having it straight is a nice thing. It also gives you a nice way to check where your rifle's straight, all that sort of stuff. Gives you another reference point. You have to set it up to do that. But anyway, let's get on to how you time them. To start off with, when you get your muzzle brake, you will make it's, your barrel has to be threaded, obviously. I should say, if you're getting your barrel threaded, you send your muzzle brake in at the same time and then they can time it. They can change the relationship of where the muzzle brake um, does up tight is what we're talking about in the timing. So, you put it on, you wind it on, as said, if it's getting put done by the, by the gunsmith, you get threaded, that's nice and easy, you don't need to worry. But it should do up to where it does up tight, and I'll go through that in a minute, in the straight position. So it is lined up with everything else. Now the way I like to get them tight, um, you, you can use spanners and bits and pieces to make sure it's tight. The way I tend to do it, which suits with the Cerakote that we have on these things, um, yes you can use spanners, yes you can put a screwdriver to the middle and that sort of stuff, you're running the edge of damaging things. The way I tend to do it is with something that everyone should have in their workshop, is in their, in their toolkit, is a nylon hammer. Just so it's just got no, different levels of nylon, but it is or plastic, or you know, I'm not talking copper. You can use one of the cloth ones, or where they have the cowhide or that sort of thing on it. But it's a soft face hammer. The way I tend to do it: make sure your bipod or wherever you're holding your rifle is rigid; it's not going to twist. Not a lot of force going to go here. But the way I like to do these sort of things is I'll actually support the muzzle brake a little bit with my hand, and I'll tighten it. But it's not going to come undone. It's done up with the tension of a tap, tap, tap of this not too tight, no damage to anything and you obviously do it at the level where you're confident it's firm and then I go and check I check with my eye to see how level things are I've, this one I've um, actually filed it to a place where nearly a full rotation uh, which is what I had to do to get this one timed and why I was running a shim but for the purpose of the video I've set it up where I've gone done the filing to get to this place here where you're hopefully going to be, we've got a little bit you've got to go a little bit further in the way, more rotation to get it done up. To be certain in a way of checking out, you use your eye. Um, I tend to have some little levels. I've already got my scope so it's nice and level. I know that my cap's level. I know that's all nice and level. And you can basically set your scope, your scope up or your rifle up. No scope on, put it on your rail. Make sure that your rifle's flat on whatever form you're using. And then you can use a pair of spirit levels to see how level everything is, how straight everything is. So that's the process to make sure, obviously, wherever you're putting your bubble level, the first one, make sure it's strapped to your rifle. Make sure you've checked that out. But then you can do a comparison with the two. If you've only got one, you can go from your scope to your, to your um, muzzle brake to make sure you've got them flat. At that stage there, um, we know we want to go a little bit further this one to get it lined up. So what I'll do is I'll show you exactly what we're doing to get it that, li that lined up. To undo it, I use exactly the same process. Just give it a couple of taps. Um, using my hand to support it so I'm not whacking the, whole, the rifle around. I'm using my hand to actually tap it and undo it. Uh, various ways you can do that. That's the way I like doing it. A soft hammer makes it nice and simple. You can also use a block of wood, that sort of stuff. Something that's soft but got enough of a whack force to give you that extra tension. Now what we're doing, as you can see on this surface here, you see I've been filing to get to this place. Now filing sounds simple. Now there's, there's other ways to do this as said. If you're getting your barrel done, you can 
you simply get where you're getting threaded, we run that face back to get it to where it times up to where it locks in exactly the right place to suit your brake. You're changing a brake like I have done several times in getting to this place, then you're really not going to change your barrel every time. Um, and you can do it with various forms. There is the other way to do it is with the likes of this shim kit. That gives you these little tiny shims, various different sizes, which you then can put on there and put on the precise amount. When I say precise amount, you can try and measure it. I always do it, but do it by trial and error. I'll put on one, do it up, lock it up, see where it is, and then get a feel for it. The way it crushes up can be different on exactly the profile of what you've got in front of the face here. Um, you'll get an idea with it. But these little kits, they're like um, 12 bucks to 20 bucks sort of thing as a, for, uh, of a shim kit. Um, these are the ones which we can sell. Your emails, we can sell these. They actually come from Brownells, as you can see. This is for the 5 8 by 24 I haven't stopped or tried to do anything in the 18 by 1s, which is another common size. And I think you'll find sizes all over the place in looking for them. We do it occasionally like this. This is an easy way to do it. Um, and at that point, I should also say something loud and clear. This stuff, which I'm about to show you, is not hard. But you are filing bits and pieces, and the, you are then taking the responsibility into your own hands. This, you can stuff it up. You can damage things. When you start removing metal, you can get it wrong. If you're handy and capable, um, in a very, in, even to just a mild form, then you're going to be able to do this. To, to take it carefully, take it easily, step by step, I'll show you that process, then it's worthwhile going forward. If you're not, or you know you have problems with this sort of stuff, or you're really uncertain, it's really not worth stuffing up a expensive muzzle brake um, or making a mess of things versus getting a professional to do it. Take it to a gunsmith, take it to someone who is handy and capable to be able to do this sort of thing. Not complicated, don't need to be qualified, but you, it is able to happen and that's what I'm showing you for, but it does come with a real proviso that um, you're filing metal, you can mess things up. So let's go on to how you can mess things up or hopefully doing things right, you can do it successfully. Um, you could also take this to your gunsmith or to someone who could actually set it up in a four jaw chuck um, and take it down very carefully or set it up in a facing machine and take it down. You can actually do it with nothing more than a file with the way I'm about to show you. Now you just want a nice fine file. Um, this is a flat smooth file. Uh, there's various forms. I think we've got, we'll have the, the flat bastard on the other side, but essentially it's just a smooth um, fine, reasonably wide file. The wider the file is, the easier it's going to be for the process that you're using. Um, generally, when people use a file, if you've been taught in a, in a mechanic shop or things like that, you've been taught to use a file in a fashion where you put your hand on the front and hand on the grip on the back here and you carefully file over the top of things. You will have learned how to draw a file. All those sort of processes are not how you do this. That is very risky for trying to file down a flat face like that there. The way I would do it, not really what I've ever been trained, something I've always found has worked and we are talking about the home handyman um, side of the equation, but what you can do and can do successfully and I have done many times. I would tend to um, not necessarily do it on a bench, do it sitting down, do it where you're comfortable and you can get the file stable in a form where you're holding the file similar to this. I'll tend to hold it against myself to make the file nice and stable. Then with the other hand, grab the, I grab the muzzle brake and you'll notice my grip is actually holding down the base near where I'm filing. So it's right down the base of the unit. So then I can sit the unit on here. Don't file your thumb, thumb away, but sit it right down here and then carefully stroke the unit down a couple of times in that direction, rotate it around a couple of times in that direction. I tend to like and watch my face. Um, if you're going a long way, then I'll tend to go side to side, so I rotate the other direction and go down here. It's still not going fast. I'm focusing on keeping the unit flat on the file at all stages, so it's not rocking around. Um, and then we'll go the other direction in the same fashion. So a couple of files in that direction, see how they want to rock. Just careful, don't go too fast. Keep it smooth and connected. Um, occasionally, get your file. Whack it out, clean it, make sure it, stays, make sure it stays clean. You go through that process, you'll see on the back what you're actually doing with your filing. 
um, and see if you need to, if you're, if you're taking it down, as I just did with this one, nearly a full rotation. So nearly a millimetre of thread has been removed with me filing off the back here, but still nice and flat. Basically carefully go down through that process. I needed a tiny bit more rotation. Um, so it was only a tiny bit. So let's see how that is. So that's, I got a nice even finish across here. That's nice and even. We'll put it on and see what we like. I would stress when you're doing this is test it 50 times. Test it, file a little bit, test it. File a little bit, test it. The worst thing you can do is try and go too fast. You want to do file a little bit and check. File a little bit and check. You'll get an idea but the normal mistake people happens is it isn't a fast process. Um, you will take you know, an hour to do this sort of thing. It might be fast. It depends how fast you're going to rotate. But you don't want to end up where it's uneven on the back of it. You also don't want to go a breath too far. Otherwise, you're doing another rotation. So you sneak up on it. Little bit by little bit, be certain about it. This one here, I'll put it on. Tap, tap. That's on. That's looking really good. can do. Now you can use paint and things. The little negative we've got going on here, I'll spin that off. Simple tap. Off that comes. You can, in the, in your, when you're getting close to getting it on here, you can actually check your witness marks. Um, yeah, you see here and there I've got a nice neat little touch all the way around which means it's kept nice and straight. If you're checking that as you come up, not so much an issue when you're only taking a tiny bit off. If you've only got an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn, not so much of an issue. But something like this, which I've taken nearly a full turn off it, because I wanted to do this demonstration for you guys, um, I've had to care be careful with that. As I'm checking, I'm watching. Um, if I see I'm going a little bit further on one side, I'll put a little bit more work on that side. You'll tend to be putting a little bit more weight on the side that you're pushing from. They tend to tilt that way because of how you're doing it. But it really depends on what your grip like and what's happening. But that's all good. Now there's various things you can do. These are sericated. You could get the whole thing resericated. You could go through and paint and, and sort that out with a little bit of paint. You could also, bear with me, um, these are also made out of a, um, a chrome molly. So you could use um, blue on this sort of stuff and make it blue, a chemical blue to take off that edge. You could simply, as there's a little tiny bit exposed, do an old um, car dealer trick, just carefully go around here and actually simple bit of sharpie which although yes it would rub off if you use it would it's go disappearing if you if it gets rubbed a lot or if you use solvent or that sort of stuff it also as you'll notice on steel sets fairly well there so you're doing nothing more than a tiny bit of a aesthetics but that is still a very crude, but still effective way to get rid of that little tiny bit of metal that's showing on the front there um, in a fashion that with the normal wipe down, normal shooting, all that sort of stuff, it's not going to be an issue. As said, you could use paint, you could coat, you could blue, you could do all those things. There we go. That's it. Now keep in mind, when you're um, rotating this, it is, these are identical, our break at least is identical top and bottom, so you're only looking for half a rotation generally. Uh, but that is, when I say, when people ask, how can I time my muzzle brake? That's what we're talking about, making it straight. Um, and the way we can do it, shim kits work really well. Um, getting it to someone who's a trained professional, a gunsmith, that works really well. But if you are on a budget and you have or a long way away and all that sort of stuff, nothing more than a file. Will do it and doing it up, a soft hammer should do it. And for those who say, Listen, I don't have those tools, go and get those tools. They're not expensive. And if you are a gun guy and you don't have basic metalworking or basic shop tools, go and get some. Anyway, um, 
that's now our time. Might as well write that, like I said, they did have a shim in it. Doesn't anymore. That's on and done. That's what I'm talking about. I hope that was some help. Catch you next time.